graders, welcome to part two of the Relationships and Biodiversity State Lab. As you can see, I have my trusty helpers here, Jen and Cooper. Um, Cooper, you know, not so much, but whatever. Uh, so today we're going to do the second part of the lab, as you can see. Safety first. Don't worry, we made sure the dogs were safety first. Also, Jen's got her glasses on, so we're good to go. You'll see how cute the dogs look in their Googles. Um, first thing you're going to do is on the Google Classroom, you're going to go over, I'm in the pink class, but even if you're in the green class, you'll go to your classwork tab and scroll down to the ecology spot and you should have number nine, relationships and biodiversity. Hopefully you already did number nine. This is like going to be an addition to number nine, so it's going to be almost like 9A. I'm just going to add it to this activity instead of having them all separated out. So you should have your own copy of that that you can open up that looks like this. And again, shh. Quiet in class, sir. Uh, it looks like this. Again, hopefully yours is already filled out through here. Um, so we're going to pick up here on test four. We're going to be testing. Uh, we're going to be looking now at molecular evidence um, for relationships. So remember in this lab that as we work through, your data all goes in this very last page. Well, second to last page, I guess it is. This very second to last page here. Um, again, we are going to be doing test number four and five um, in this video segment. So remember that you're going to be writing all of your um, data down in, this, in these columns. And remember, you should just be able to click in them in the boxes that show up, and you should be able to type right in them. So for this part, on page, where are we, on page Page two at the bottom, it says test for paper chromatography to separate plant pigments. So for this, we're supposed to wear safety goggles, so we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Shh, quiet, Cooper. Draw a, you're going to draw a pencil line about two centimeters from the bottom of the chromatography paper. Use a pencil to label the top edge of the chromatography paper B, C, X, Y, and Z as shown in figure one. So we've got chromatography paper here, and I'm going to have Jen draw the pencil. And then she's going to label it B, C, X, Y, and Z. Hopefully you can see that okay under the projector. So a lot of times I tell people it's like a pinky's length on the bottom. It's just a little bit of a smidge on the bottom there. There's our line, which is perfect. And then she's going to, across the top, she's going to kind of space them out. Yep, so that you have B, C, and X on the first half of the paper, and then Y and Z on the second half of the paper. So we're doing paper chromatography here. If we were to use pen, it wouldn't go well, because what we're going to do is we're going to take the pigments from these plants, and we're going to put them into water. And if we use pen to make the line, then the water would also dissolve the pen. Mm -hmm. What we're going to be looking at here is solubility of the plant particles. Um, so things will, you've probably done chromatography before where the, the, the water spreads up the paper and the colors spread with it. So we're going to be looking at what colors um, spread out from each of the pigments. If we use pen, then the pen pigment would also spread. So that's why we use um, pencil. Okay, so now Jen's going to take these four dropper bottles over here. They're each labeled different things. We have botanicurus. Uh, we have species X species Y, and species Z. Now, I always tell people this sometimes comes out really fast. Some of them, you got to give them a little squeeze. Some of them come out really fast. You can see right here in just this set of four, there are three different types of dropper bottles. So there's this one's one kind. Here's another kind. They all pour a little differently. So we'll see how Jen does. But basically, she's going to put a drop of the pigment. So for Botanicurus, she's going to put a drop of the Botanicurus just above that pencil line to the best of her ability. A little higher. Yep, yeah, right there. Perfect. Oh, she's really good at this. She's way better at this than I am. So even if it spreads, it's gonna spread. That's fine. It's supposed to spread because it's supposed to kind of smush out into the paper. So then she's gonna do X again. If the drops end up overlapping a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Did that one work? Wrong bottle. Oh, good catch, good catch. So she's gonna do a drop or two of uh, X, about as high as she did the other one. One might need. Oh, perfect. There we go. And again, even if it ends up spreading, don't lick it, Doug. Even if it ends up spreading, Cooper is very into science. I don't know if you knew this. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. 
it will end up separating out the way it's supposed to. A little drop of white. Oh, she's so much better at this thing. It's like Beaks of Fishes all over again. She's breaking my heart. <laughs> Man. I'm going to make her do gel electrophoresis next. That'll show her. All right, so now we got our four drops. Now we're going to take the paper and fold it hot dog wise. Okay, fold it hot dog wise. And what I also have here that you can't see is a little cup of water. So the key here is, uh, there we go. So the key here is we're going to put the paper down into the cup. We do, we want the water level to be lower than the pencil line. So before we put it in, I'm going to just steal this from you just to see how I did with my water level because I just kind of eyeballed it. So if you can see the pencil line and the cup, it's going to be pretty close, but I think it's going to be okay. Even if it's a little above the pencil line, it's not the end of the world. So Jen's going to put the paper into the cup. It'll kind of stand up. That's why we fold it so that it kind of stands right up in there. Um, and then we're actually just going to put this off to the side. If you look into it, which I don't know if you can kind of see it, you can see that the water is already starting to soak up the paper. So if we put it off to the side there, and we come back and read it in a few minutes, we'll be able to get our results. So while that's percolating, we're going to move on to test number five, which is on page three. So test number five is an indicator test for enzyme M. So we remember, hopefully, from our DNA unit that enzymes are a type of protein. Proteins are made in the ribosomes, and the um, recipe for the protein comes from the DNA. Uh, if you're thinking, holy crap, I have no idea what she's talking about, think back to your um, five DNA fun facts and think about um, and think about the DNA Lights Lab and how we, we had to code for those different things. Um, and we have our A's, T's, C's, and G's, and then we lose the T and we get the G and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, basically, the enzyme is a protein that's made from the DNA. So if the DNA is the same, it's going to make the same protein. So that's what we're looking for, a relationship basically in the DNA here. So it says, again, you got to wear goggles, so we're good to go on that. For poopy, but that's all right. We'll let them slide. It is not practical to test a plant directly for cure-all. Remember from the first video that cure-all is that cancer, potentially cancer-curing agent that is in small supply in the Botanicurus, and we're looking for a plant that is closely related to it that may also produce cure-all. However, if enzyme M is present, a plant may produce cure-all. Again, if it's making the same enzymes, then at least it has parts of the same DNA. To test the plant extract from Botanicurus for the presence of enzyme M, we're going to put one small scoop of indicator powder into one of the depression well trays using a clean microtip dropper. Meh, we're not going to use that. We're just going to use the dropper bottles. Um, a fizzing reaction, here's the key part, a fizzing reaction indicates that enzyme M is present. Okay, a fizzing reaction indicates that enzyme M is present. So we are going to... First thing Jen's going to do, here's our little depression or well tray as we call it. Jen's going to take the little bit of enzyme M that's in this container. She's going to scoop just a little bit into each of these four wells. The line is here basically to tell you you don't need these eight down here. You just need the four across the top. So we're going to do a little scoop of the enzyme M powder into BC, X, Y, and Z. Trying to zoom in a little bit. It's almost too much light. That's okay. Let's see. Close the curtain. Oh, yeah. That was good stuff. Watch this. Mm. It's not better. Oh, that's good, actually. Here we go. That's pretty good. Okay. So we've got our powder in our four things one, two, three, four. Uh, and now Jen's going to take the Botanicurus extract. Uh, and do the same thing as before, just a couple of drops, and we're going to look to see if we get a fizzing reaction in here. That's what we're looking for. Fizzing means uh, positive for enzyme M. More? Yep, a couple more drops. So if you listen really close, oh, you can see it too. If you listen really closely, you can hear it. Jen, fizzing or no fizzing? Fizzing. Definitely fizzing. So in your labs, um, in the back, on that data page, remember we are uh, in this column now. We're doing test number five. So Botanicurus is enzyme M present. You're going to write the word present right here in this box. Present. Very easy. I'll even show you how it's spelled. Present. 
Okay. So now Jen's going to do the same thing for X, Y, and Z. And we'll record that information, or you'll record that information as well. Okay. Fizzing, Jen? No fizzing. Okay. Looks like a little bit of fizzing. Yeah, does it look like as much fizzing as BC? No. No, it's a little less fizzing, but there is a little bit of fizzing. So we're going to say same thing for X. You're going to, down here, you're going to write present. Okay? Present like a gift. Why? Fizzing? No fizzing. No fizzing. Okay. So that, again, if there's no fizzing, it means that enzyme M is not present. So for Y, you're going to type in this box, not present. Okay. And then the last one, Z. Drip drop. Yeah, you can hear it. And Lots you can fizzing. definitely see it. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but we can hear it. And definitely some fizzing. So again, last one here you're going to write in this last box down here, present also. Okay, so now at the end right now, you should have all three of these columns filled in, <laughs> filled in from uh, the first video. We're working on this one right now. We're going to fill it in in a minute. And then you should now have all of column five filled in as well. If you do not, then pause the video and finish that part up. So the last thing we're going to do, we can push that back. And I'm going to open this curtain again because I like the light better. Uh, now we can take a look at our chromatography. So you can see when you look in the cup, if I could find that camera. There we go. You look in the cup, you can see that the water has really worked its way up those... Um, that paper. So we take the paper out. Move that from the eggs. I can't do this. I might need the light for this one. Mm, I don't know. What do you think? I think the light makes it worse. Um, you know what we might do? Yeah, just like a white piece of paper underneath. There we go. Now it stands out just a little bit more. So if we're looking at these, and remember, we have them labeled at the top so we don't lose track of which is which. I can zoom out a little bit, too. You're going to look at, so here's the colors that spread from BC, the colors that spread from X, Y, and Z. So in your lab, you're going to, again, you're on this page. Now we're filling in column four. You're going to write, let's see if I can split screen this a little bit here. I need to see my face though. It's terrible. There we go. That's a little better. So you can write down what colors you see. So Jen, what color? Where are we? Paper chromatography. So that's test four. For BC, starting at the pencil line, what colors do you see? Pink. Okay. Uh, maybe a green. Okay. Yeah. A little greenish. It's kind of like a greeny yellow, but yeah, yeah green works. Orange. Okay. Yellow green, and then blue. Blue. All right. How about for, I'm going to move that box a little bit so it doesn't overflow. How about for X? Pink, orange, greenish, yellow, and blue. Green slash yellow. Yellow are really Ms. Yeah. Um, yep. And blue. Yep. I'm going to make that just a smidge smaller so that it fits. Oh, what a jerk. <sighs> hold, please. Ooh, hold. Time out. TV time out. It is, but I just got to get to it. There's an undo button. But you also can do it. Be quiet. Trying to help. Yep, you're super helpful. All right, there we go. It fits. It's splendid. All right, on to Y. What do we see y. for Y? Yellow, green, and blue. Mm, yellow, green, and blue. Forgot the letter here. Oh, geez. Typo central. Okay, and last but not least for species Z. Uh, looks like a pink, and then a Orange, purple, 
Really? You do have a bit of a purple there. All right, Jen. Making up colors here. What else after purple? Green. And blue. And blue. All right, beautiful. So that's what you should have in those boxes there. Um, so now you should have all of the boxes filled in. I just keep making this bigger for no apparent reason. Where is the other side? Okay, so now you should have all five of these first columns filled in. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, and five. So that is your your some of your molecular tests for uh, paper chromatography and for enzyme M. Uh, the next video we do will be the um, the last two, and we'll talk about how to finish up this. Um, we'll help talk about how to finish up this lab. Thanks for watching, Jen. Thanks for your help, Cooper. Thanks for sleeping through it. There he is, folks. Really, student of the year. Okay. Have a good day, guys.